In terms of CVRT, you have to remember the HDV and HBV co-infection are generally not known, known to be very severe and the chronicity risk is very less because what is the fate of HBV will be the fate of HDV. Hi guys, Dr. Patil here and I'm back with one more treasure video. In this treasure video, we will be learning some essential points from the prep ladder apps, NITSS treasures. Now, what are treasures? If you're not familiar, what are treasures? Treasures are basically simplification of complex information from the standard textbooks into simplified tables from which the revision is easily possible. Okay, so today we're talking about viral hepatitis. Now, viral hepatitis is one hell of a topic. Right? Like there are tens of pages of uh, description of viral hepatitis in your Harrison and other standard textbooks. But essentially, testable points are very minimal. So this is one table which kind of summarizes all of that. If you scan these pages several times, then maybe you will remember everything that you need to know about the acute viral hepatitis as well as chronic. Okay. So this table compares most of the important things. Now, what is the incubation period? Then the onset of symptoms, whether it is like acute or insidious, the age preference which is affecting the patient, then the route of transmission, clinical severity, whether it can cause fulminant liver failure or it's going to be mild illness, then whether we have a vaccine for prophylaxis and a treatment wise, what can we offer, whether there is a need for treatment and what can we offer, right. So let us take individual viruses, hepatitis A virus, the incubation period is around 15 to 45 days with a mean of 30 days. The onset of hepatitis A virus, as we all know, it's always going to be acute, it's not going to be chronic or insidious, it's like acute and it's not a chronic entity. Uh, hepatitis A virus, we all also know that HIV, HIV is the most common cause for acute viral hepatitis in children, right? Overall, that's not the most common cause. We know it is hepatitis E, but in children, HIV is the most common cause for acute viral hepatitis. So, it usually affects children and unvaccinated young adults. Okay, so transmission, we know that it is mostly fecal-oral route, percutaneous route is unusual, sexual theoretical risk is there, not many cases are diagnosed or diagnosis is also very difficult, right? Okay. In terms of clinical severity, it is generally going to be mild, not very severe. Fulminant liver failure is generally unusual, but I have seen few patients. Okay. But generally it is mild. It's not known to cause fulm fulminant hepatic failure. The progression or prognosis is generally considered to be excellent and there is no chronicity risk, right? There is no chronicity risk. Prophylaxis, we do have a vaccine for hepatitis A and antivirals are generally not warranted, right? So that's about your HAV. In terms of hepatitis B virus, the incubation period is relatively longer, 30 to 80 days with a mean of around 60 to 90 days. In terms of onset, it could be insidious onset or acute. Okay. And sometimes we also know that hepatitis B virus infection, if acute infection may not be symptomatic, right? This typically affects young adults. And we also know that mother to child transmission is a real risk because age of acquiring infection is the most important determinant of chronicity. HBV occurring in adults, less than 5% risk of chronicity. HBV acute infection occurring in the neonates, more than 90% risk of chronicity, right? So that's definitely going to be a concern. Okay, so in terms of transmission, we know that the most important transmission is, yeah, there is perinatal risk, there is sexual root risk, Percutaneous risk, right? Needle prick risk is there. Needle prick risk is there. Fecal oral transmission is not well documented. So it is basically parental route of transmission. In terms of clinical severity, it can cause occasionally very severe disease, right? But as we have already told, 90% of neonates and quite a lesser number of people with adults are likely to develop chronicity, right? So chronicity is not usual in adults. It is the rule in neonates if the infection is acquired at that age group. We have a vaccine. Basically, we give the surface antigen itself as a vaccine. We have a recombinant form like Engerix B. And treatment wise, well, we have a long list of drugs. But most commonly what we follow today is either entecavir or more preferred than that is tenofovir, right? Tenofovir is the most important drug that we offer today for a patient of hepatitis B. And if you want to consider pegylated interferon, that's also available. Lamivudine we no longer use, adafovir we no longer use. So entecavir, pegylated interferon, non-pegylated interferon also is not that commonly used, right? So those are the two things from this table. Additional thing we need to add is 
tenophobia. Okay, now looking at hepatitis C, its incubation period might range from 15 to 160 with a mean of around 50 days, right? Onset could be insidious or acute. Now remember HCV among the acute infections is least likely to cause an ectric illness, cause an ectric illness as part of an acute infection, as part of an acute infection. Now what do I mean by this statement? That simply means that majority of the patients of HCV, when you see them chronic HCV, you cannot pinpoint and say that this patient had an ectric illness this many months back or this many years back and after that maybe he has become a chronic HCV infection. So a preceding acute ectric illness history is really difficult to elicit in these patients because it doesn't occur. In case of HBV, you see a patient of chronic hepatitis B, a reasonable number of patients will be able to tell you that okay, six months back, one year back, two years back, I did have an episode of jaundice with a little bit of fever and it subsided on its own. And after that, I was doing fine. Now that you are telling me that I'm hepatitis B positive, right? That's the usual story. Okay, so in terms of the age preference, it can affect any age, but more common in adults because adults are the ones who are more vulnerable for the transmission. Okay, the mode of transmission is again parenteral as you can see from the table. So there is a percutaneous risk, perinatal risk and sexual risk. There is no fecal oral route of transmission. Okay, in terms of severity, not very severe, but chronicity is very common, right? Among the individual viruses that we are describing, this has the highest risk of chronicity. Highest risk of chronicity. HCV has, is the one which has the highest risk of chronicity. Okay, unfortunately, right now we do not have any vaccine for hepatitis C. And in, some, in terms of treatment, okay, we have moved quite far away from the pegylated interferon or ribavirin. We mostly consider combination of combination of direct acting antivirals, right? And currently, most of the guidelines, what they recommend is you preferably use pangenotypic regimens, pangenotypic regimens. That's the recommendation for most of the guidelines okay that's about hcv now talking about the hdv now we know that it's an incomplete virus its incubation period is around 30 to 180 days with a mean of around 60 to 90 the onset could be insidious or acute okay its age predilection has to be similar to hbv because it is dependent on hbv right so in terms of the route of transmission it has to be parental Right, so there is risk of sexual, percutaneous and perinatal route of transmission. There is no risk of fecal oral route of transmission. Okay, in terms of severity, you have to remember the HDV and HBV co-infection are generally not known, known to be very severe and the chronicity risk is very less because what is the fate of HBV will be the fate of HDV. If both co-occur in an adult, as I've already told you, chronicity risk is under 5% for HBV. So chronicity risk for HDV will also be low. And HBV largely being a mild illness in the form of acute uh, hepatitis. HDV co-occurring with the HPV will be mild. But when HDV occurs as a super infection over a pre-existing hepatitis B virus infection, liver is already compromised. So chronicity risk is very high, right? Higher than what you could encounter in case of hepatitis C. Chronicity risk is close to 90% in case pre-existing HBV and super infection with HDV and the fulminant liver failure is also common. You need to remember that. Okay, so that's what this table summarizes. And then how do we prevent? We don't have any prophylactic vaccine for HDV, but HBV vaccine would also indirectly confer the prophylaxis against HDV because HDV cannot infect alone. Okay, if you have to talk about treatment, you can think of treating with pegylated interferon alpha and properly managing the HBV infection. Okay, last virus we are talking about is HEV, hepatitis E. The incubation period is around 14 to 60 days with a mean of around 40 days. Usual presentation is in the acute form and you have to also remember that this is, this is the most common virus responsible for acute viral hepatitis in India. This is also the most con common virus responsible for epidemics of or outbreaks of acute viral hepatitis in India and this is also the most common virus responsible for liver transplantation following acute liver failure of whatever cause. You talk about acute liver failure following paracetamol poisoning, drug induced, 
ischemic hepatitis and hev hepatitis hev hepatitis is the most common cause for liver transplantation in india okay now this also affects relatively young adults in terms of the route of transmission it is feco oral there is no parental route of transmission documented most cases it is mild but it can cause severe fulminant liver failure particularly in pregnant women which is in, in itself an important mcq point okay we do have a vaccine for hev and in terms of treatment most cases treatment is not called for right so with this i am winding off this quick discussion on the treasures now you can find such treasureful informations on the treasure section of the peplad rap so do a quick look at after you have done through videos and notes so that you kind of quickly revise the essential points subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from preplada